Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Burning River Podcast. I'm Jake Scarborough, joined by my co-hosts, Tyler McIntosh, Fidel Fabian, Sal Zavala, and Matthew Stotts. How are you guys doing this today? Yeah. Phenomenal. Ty, Ty got, you're just going to stare I, in my I, soul not saying anything? I got anything? jump scared by the lady that said the meeting was being recorded. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Thank you, Zoom. Very cool. Matthew, you just enjoying that Pepsi over there? I see that sums up Matthew because it's always something with him. All right. So uh, New Year. Lot, or not really lots of things to talk about, but some things. Um, first up, The Clash. Now, obviously, that's been a race where, you know, fans have been very uh, critiqueful. Is that the right word for it? With yeah. how the performance of the race has gone, the idea of the race as a whole. Um, but I want to hear your guys' takes on it because I feel like personally this year was a lot different. Um, so, Ty, you were off the board with that. Yeah, I mean, I think this year was certainly compared to last year's was different. Obviously, with the the rain being, I don't think we've ever seen NASCAR completely move a race up twenty four hours without weather happening first. Um, but it wasn't that bad, honestly. Like the qualifying was weird, but the racing itself was actually pretty good. I feel like. Um, obviously you had the Toyotas out front most of the race and, and being pretty good. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. Fidel? Well, my <laughs> shit is dying. So until this fix is just skip me. This is what happens when you have shit internet, everyone. Sure. All right. Um, Sal, move to you. Um, first off, props to NASCAR. I feel like that was the smartest move in the moment especially considering the whole um you had to like factor in <clears throat> that these teams need to get like daytona prep ready and all that stuff so i mean good on them to move it forward it def you could definitely tell that everything was kind of being rushed in a way and i think they nailed it perfect because i mean you could see the rain start to fall literally five minutes after the uh, Mexico series finished up their race. Um, I do feel like it is over hated and I, I can see why like you're making these teams go out two weeks before the biggest race of the season to go run this exhibition race that not everyone can even run you. Some teams show up, run a couple laps and then go home. Um, but it, I personally love the clash. It means that we're back. I liked it better whenever it was literally the week before the 500, because then you kind of start going into the motion of 500 qualifying the next day, then a couple days off, you get the duels, practice, truck, Xfinity, Daytona 500. Um, I'd like, maybe see a format like that come back maybe not run daytona as a clash again but somewhere in florida run it to where you could be pretty easy to travel over to internet daytona international speedway get the get the season rolling uh, matthew um <clears throat> um i didn't watch it But that was the question. I, I think that was, was the question, right? I didn't want. I didn't watch. Right. Okay. Well, you know what? I mean, at least I, you're upfront about it. I mean, it, it's a class. I don't really watch the class, so all I heard was that I think Denny Hamlin won. So that's yeah. all I got from that. All right. Well, uh, we'll move on from you back to Fidel, since it looks like his internet's competent now. Yep, it's back to normal. Uh, I think the clash is fine just that i feel like it's not the best way to demonstrate our sport because that was the whole point of the la coliseum to uh show off new fans what nascar is all about but uh these over the last couple of years this hasn't felt right like this was the right way to show new fans what nascar is all about either bring them back to daytona you know that probably would be a horrible idea or go over to a different track 
that's all I got for the clash. But race was decent at least. All right. Um, well, honestly, my take is, you know, this year's race wasn't that bad. Um, last year's was kind of an iffy one, you know, the year before that, I wouldn't say the first year was a success. Last year showed improvement this year, um, definitely gave us quality racing. Um, you know, we had the issue where they had to bump the race up 24 hours. Everyone ended up got, uh, that was there, got to see it free. Mm -hmm. So NASCAR refunded fans and everything for who bought tickets to the day after. But nevertheless, as a whole, as much as I hate to say it, and I feel like some people would agree, no one really likes to agree with Denny Hamlin on something. And his whole take of it was um, something similar to Sal that, you know, I wish the clash was the week before the 500. But I also do wish it went back to Daytona because uh, Denny Hamlin was saying, you know, the clash was used as a way to see who was going to be one of the best guys going into the 500. So obviously now with the uh, little amount of practice they get, you don't really know who's going to be a threat aside from the duels. And then that's it. You know, qualifying can only mean so much. But the duels are your real only way of knowing who's going to be able to move through the field and who's going to be a threat. So we don't get that out of the clash anymore, obviously. I feel like the clash is kind of a way of saying, hey, here's who's going to be good at Richmond and maybe Martinsville. But, I mean, it is what it is. I personally don't hate the idea of the Coliseum. I feel like this year was an issue where they lost all the money they needed to gain from it. And we likely won't see it happen again. I wouldn't be surprised if they did something else random. But that's kind of what NASCAR does best. So they kind of go off the wall with some of their moves. We all know this, whether they be controversial or not. Um, nevertheless, to move forward from that, we've had some news throughout the week. One of the big things, obviously, this year, uh, total new front row. For the 500 after qualifying, normally it's at least been Chevrolet lockdown or a Hendrick car on pole. Um, we had two Fords on the front row, that being Joey Logano and Michael McDowell. Um, announced the day after qualifying via Bob, uh, Bob Pockris that Front Row Motorsports and Team Penske have an alliance that was agreed upon weeks in advance. Anyways. Huh. They agreed on a partnership weeks in advance, so we have that. Um, I want to hear your guys' opinions on it, what it could come from it, and uh, you know if that had any implication on Michael McDowell getting the front row too. So it's I. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's really exciting personally, just because I mean, front row obviously Michael McDowell did really good last season. Uh, one Indy road course, which is I mean, he's a road course guy, so I kind of expected he's done pretty good on road courses. Yeah. Um, but that team as a whole with this is going to benefit like really nicely. We're already seeing he's starting on the front row for the 500 um, looked pretty good in the duel too. I mean, ran up front. Um, I think it's going to be great. Team Penske obviously doesn't really need too much help. They're coming off a championship with Ryan Blaney, but uh, as for front row, I think we're seeing maybe the start of a good season for them, especially with Todd Gillen coming off his rookie season, Michael McDowell coming off a season with a win that was a road course. I think it's going to be pretty good. Adele. Uh, my mom's slow talking in the background, so skip me again. This guy, this guy, it's always something with him. All right, um, Sal, um, it's it's gonna be fun to watch because I mean, I I do fully think that this alliance had a big say in the thirty fourth qualifying effort. I don't think just a front row built cars going out there and setting a lap to start second in the Daytona 500. Um, but yeah, I mean, probably one of, if not the best season in Michael McDowell's career came last season. And that was with a small alliance, I believe with either Penske or RFK. And now that they're, and I mean, there, there's also rumors out there that, 
Ford is treating front row as a tier one um, team. So, I mean, you're getting that alliance with Penske, who, like Tyler said, just got off the championship with Ryan Blaney, and then the year before that with Joey Logano. Um, it's going to be real exciting to see that team probably competing for wins at other tracks, not just super speedways and road courses. Matthew? Um, yeah, it played a part into the front row and all that, <laughs> but I'm not surprised either. Um, I think Fords are trying to, you know, become more um, <clears throat> noticeable compared to last year. They weren't really up there last year in speed, at least qualifying. So, but now with front row, um, I don't know. Uh, it feels like, to me personally, I felt like they were pretty big last year. Even even just with the one win from McDowell, you know, at the road course, but he was pretty consistent. Maybe it was just McDowell. Who knows? But no, nah, um, I think it's huge for Front Row to kind of have this this play out for them the way it has, and and getting what Sal said, basically tier one, to tier one is tier one stuff for them for from from Ford and all that. <clears throat> so it's huge especially from how far they came from. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty big, and um, I think it's going to, you know, make good things for them, not just on plate tracks, but I think every type of track out there. But Al? Yeah, I got to go with the exact same thing Sasa said. FRM, they are rapidly improving with their, not only with their road courses, uh, road course, I don't know how to word it, they were rapidly improving. I can see. I don't even know how to say it. God. Yeah, you know, just get me. I, I got nothing. It was exactly what Sansa said. I'm broke slow. <laughs> At least Matthew was able to put up a coherent sentence. Um. <clears throat> anyways, you know, I, I'm gonna go off the wall with this one, and I'm gonna have a reason why. I'm gonna go ahead and disagree with you guys. I do think yes, it had a perform or it had an impact on the front row for McDowell, right? I feel like that's kind of a no brainer. We had Harrison Burton also make the top ten for qualifying, but my whole thing is how long has Wood Brothers been a Pinsky affiliate car? And they've told us, oh yeah, that's basically our fourth Pinsky car, and we know damn good and well it's not. You know, it hasn't it been. Sucks. It hasn't been a fourth Penske car since Blaney's been there. At least in that type of wording. Yes, they've been getting help from Penske, but I don't think it's directly just been, hey, you know, this is literally built here and we're shipping it off to Virginia to their shop. So it's going to be odd unless we see a massive improvement with Wood Brothers 2. I do don't personally see front row motorsports having a bigger leap than them in terms of affiliation. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see front row win a plate race. You know, it's possible. You know, Harrison Burton was quick at some of the plate races. One of them he got flipped in, but we don't talk about that. Um, But I don't know. I'm just, I, I don't think it's going to be a huge move for the future. Unless we see Penske actually help out their affiliates a lot more than they have in recent. So, with that, we have, um, what was it, the dual? Dual review? Alright. So, with that, you know, we saw in qualifying uh, Anthony Alfredo and who was the other one? It was David Reagan. David Reagan. Qualify their way in. So... During the duels, BJ McLeod, JG Ailey, they missed the field, meaning Jimmy Johnson, Kaz Grala make it in. So aside from that, the duels as a whole, what's your guys' takes on it? Um, I unfortunately I, I really only got to see the back half of the first duel. Um I will say one thing that this is kind of off topic, but not really. 
Uh, one thing with NASCAR's format for the way that they do the duels is not having a practice beforehand. Um, obviously, it didn't end up affecting Kaz, but Kaz could not even get the car fired uh, and up to speed for his qualifying lap so he didn't get to set one. Thankfully, it didn't affect you know him. In the end, he made the 500. Uh, but I think that's that's like one thing that it, it makes it hard to kind of fully stand by NASCAR by that, other than the fact that I think that's one of the weirder decisions that they made. Um, other than that, the duel was really exciting. J.J. Ailey definitely tried everything that he could in Duel 1. Um, he was... <laughs> He was racing Jimmy a little tight, but um, it was it was good. It was close racing. I think that was probably the most exciting dual race as far as the transfer spot that we've had in in a while, um, because they were up there trying everything they could. Um, duel two, pretty good. I mean, both pretty good duels, but obviously, I think the big story is the hit that Ryan Blaney took uh, and his feelings afterwards uh, with the field, very Brad Keselowski esque. Um, from when I think. I don't remember his exact statement because it was really long ago. I think it was like 2019, but something about not lifting um, and everybody in the field not really having that much respect. Um, I, I don't really see it that way, honestly. I see it as a racing deal. I think it was people trying to get what they could. Um, it's unfortunate uh, that he got hooked. But other than that, Tyler Reddick uh, stealing Duel 1 and Bell taking Duel 2. The Toyotas look really good. I think we talked a lot, at least in Jake and I when we talked, we didn't really see much out of the Toyotas and we were really uh, disappointed. But they obviously race well. So uh, Bubba Wallace led a lot of laps in Duel 2. Denny was up there a little, but Bell and Reddick take them. So I'm really excited to see what Toyota does. Fidel? Uh, I was kind of waiting on your call, but uh, nah. I think the duels kind of show where Toyota was mostly focusing their speed on because obviously qualifying they did not do so well. It's mostly a Ford and Chevy uh, show in the top 10 in qualifying. But during the duels, Tyler Reddick won state uh, state one, won first duel, and Chris Revelle ended up winning second. And uh, you can see that the Toyotas, apart from Truex and that missed pit road call, they were working really well. So I'm kind of excited to what they can do in the 500. But overall, racing in the duels this year have been really good. Yeah, the I I was real excited for the racing. I mean, they one of the bigger things uh with this new car and this super speedway package is you couldn't form that second line. It was kind of like a follow the leader and while to some extent they are still kind of stuck where you are. I mean, you heard Kyle Busch in his interview after being involved in that wreck duel too um say how he was just stuck but seeing both lanes be able to form and stick, um, I think that's a huge step forward in this package. And hopefully we see that kind of racing Sunday. Um, but the duels were solid. I mean, Toyota's there to play as always for the race. Um, I was kind of curious with the new package if, Ford was going to let lose some of their speed on super speedways because I feel like over the last couple years they've kind of been the ones to beat at least dual wise in these uh short sprints so it was just kind of interesting that other than McDowell and maybe Logano I didn't really see any other Ford and I mean Harrison they're late but that was just because Denny about tried to kill everyone so Matthew uh -huh. the duels were good um duel one their problem we good huh okay no no just uh, just the way he started off I was like there's no shot he watched them I was gonna say no like... I watched <clears throat> I watched I watched I saw the uh <clears throat> Oh shit! Oh crap! I saw the uh, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, the duel one, duel one was good. It had uh, um, we almost had that collision. I think that was right in duel one on the pit road or whatever. I think that's yeah. what happened. Okay. Um, that would have been cool, but it didn't happen. So uh, just for some people to learn, uh, their their I guess things. Um, but transfer Manners. style was cool. <laughs> man. Manners. Oh yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, nah, bro, it was good. 
Duel one was cool. JJ Yaley almost getting in would have been funny, but <clears throat> didn't get in. Johnson got in, so I guess you know got to ride it out as NASCAR wants it. So then duel two. Uh, who what happened in duel two? Um, well, hold on, did you say Jonathan or did you say Johnson? Am I, said I Johnson. said Johnson. Johnson. Okay, I sh- Johnson. my brain clicked Jonathan. I was like, wait, what? Jonathan I Parker has Johnson. replaced uh, Jimmy Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Mm, diversity, but nah. So with um. <laughs> Door two. What happened in door two? We had oh we had that oh yeah we had that bit right yeah we had that bit right door two, and then um yeah that was about it man. All right, well you know what, <laughs> Matthew always brings just different. No, I'm, just, I'm I'm trying man I'm trying to see I'm trying you're to hard to see it. you you call it as if you're sitting here like bullshitting at a PlayStation party. No, you but don't... see, he he did it like a true southerner. He was sitting there, he was recapping, and he goes, "Yeah, we had that big wreck, hey, that big wreck." <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I reacted to it too. I was like, "Oh, big wreck." Yeah, I'm out there counting the cars and all that too. Out there counting who's all in it, and I'm like, "As one, as two, and then I just <laughs> one, uh, uh, two, uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right." But no, I I get what you mean. No. I personally didn't get to watch the duels. I kind of just watched highlights. Um, mm, that's crazy. Yeah, but I watched highlights, Matthew. Something you don't know how to do, apparently. Who needs highlights, bro? They just go left. Yeah, all you got are low lights. Anyways. Um, <laughs> the way he looked at me right there. <laughs> Alright. So, you know, duel one. Yeah, we saw... You know, as Ty mentioned, Toyota, they didn't do good in qualifying. Uh, we got to see that they have the race pace. We were talking about how they typically weren't that great in qualifying ever when it came to Daytona, but this was worse than it ever was. What was it? Like their fastest car was 22nd with Eric Jones. And that's a satellite team being faster than your main focus cars. That's an issue. So obviously they got their shit together in the duels to see Reddick and Bell win. So I'm interested to see how that pans out for the 500 itself. He's driving. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see how that pans out for the 500 itself, though. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that slip behind your pedal, Doug. Um, you know, as as you guys were saying, JJ Yaley tried his hardest. Um, racing a little aggressive, yes, but I do not blame him because you're a guy driving a car for a team that's currently being accused of not paying its previous driver. We do not know how much money that team has. So for all we know, he was putting that car in a place that it should not have been at all. And fighting a seven-time champ who's driving for a big corporation with a lot of money behind it this year, you've got to do whatever you can. And I don't blame him for racing the way he did. Obviously, you know, it didn't work out for him in the end. But I feel like if you are someone that makes team decisions, that's something you're going to look at and say, okay, Yaley's only here for one race that we know of because he's not got a ride anywhere else in any series. That's something you look at and you got to say, okay, you know, we want that. We want someone that's going to put in that much, you know, as much work as possible to do what they can to bring whatever they have across the line. So that that's what I took out of that. Hopefully he ends up somewhere. But nevertheless, you know, the duels as a whole, from what I saw, not bad racing at all, um, aside from just the, the wrecks it did seem like, yeah, a lot of people were racing harder than they should have. Um, Kind of not really giving much room between each other. So I'm interested to see if in the 500 we see our typical one lane race for the first half. Or we see everyone being chaotic and us having a big one by lap 50. Because with the way the duel shaped up, that's what we're going to see is a wreck soon in the or early on in the race so 
It's hard to tell, but you never know. I just don't see the point in going that hard in a duel when all that determines is your starting position. And now half the people don't even have a proper starting car for Daytona that they worked on for the last like five months. So take that as you will. Um, aside from that, does anyone else have any input before we move forward? I think one thing I just thought about was like <laughs> how. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Anyways, the the one thing that I thought about was how normally if duel one's chaotic, duel two is going to be the opposite. Both duels were really the same, so it makes me wonder if we're going to have the opposite, where it's going to be the duels were kind of crazy and the five hundred is going to be calm, or are we just going to see really hectic racing all weekend? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I I kind of just thought about that. You know, sometimes it plays out. It's it's fifty fifty. Duels were not fifty fifty, so I'm kind of scared for Sunday, <laughs> yeah, honestly. I... <laughs> I feel like drivers are too. Maybe a lot of team owners too. They're like, oh, well, shit, mm-hmm. we're going to be paying a lot of money here in a couple of weeks. Just go ahead and put about Five three mil to be a race the between the air titans. It could be, yeah. Thank God, Juan, Juan Pablo's not around. It's, it's, it's going to be a race against the weather too. That's another thing. What was it like? There's a 90% chance of rain on Sunday. Yeah. So. We're we're in a very odd spot this weekend because Florida was betting my whole allowance on that one percent. Who? Whoever wants to make money, bet against that guy because he's terrible with takes. All right. Um, nevertheless, predictions for this weekend. Truck, Xfinity Cup, tire go. Oh man. Um Trucks is tough because I don't I don't really know. I'm gonna go with a safe bet. I'm gonna say Ben Rhodes for trucks. It's a safe bet. I don't trucks are just random. Um, Xfinity. I'm gonna be honest with you. Somebody that I that did really good last year. Um, at play races especially. Um, didn't win the championship. Was in the championship four. I think Justin Allgaier is gonna win. Uh, the Daytona race for the Xfinity series, Cup series. Um, it's tough. I'm going to stand on business. I think it's Kyle Busch's year, truthfully. Um, looked really good last year. Just didn't didn't have the, the yellow fall in the right time, but I think Kyle Busch wins it. Not rigged, not biased or anything. Um, not at all. Well, in trucks, I got Sauter winning. I don't know why, but I feel like Johnny Sauter, he's going to – do something at Daytona. He was pretty quick in practice from uh, yesterday. Still races? And – what? <laughs> Johnny Sutter still races? Yeah, he's still yes. part oh, time. I thought you asked if he I was thought a he, racist. Yeah, that's I what like, I heard too. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That was like, huh? Yeah, I was like, eh. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't know he raced. I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know he's doing. Okay, that's nice. that's interesting. I didn't know that. In Xfinity, I got the plate track master Austin Hill winning at Daytona, and for Cup. I'm starting to see a bit of a rhythm. Last year, Kyle Busch uh, finished on the podium for the Clash, wrecked out of the duels, was there to win the 500, wrecked on the last lap. This year, finished in the podium, Clash, wrecked out of the duels. I feel the same thing is going to happen in 500. Another rhythm I've been seeing, first-time winners or their first ever 500 these last couple of years. Michael McDowell won his first 500 in 2021. Austin Cindric won his first in 2022. Ricky Stenhouse won his first in 2023. I think, and it's probably me so wrong by the time we get there, Christopher Bell wins the Daytona 500. You know what? I can respect that. <clears throat> I'm glad someone does. Um, <laughs> four trucks. Grant Infinger was robbed of a championship last year, so his revenge tour starts tonight with a win. Then you got Xfinity. Damn. JRM really botched that finish last year. (laughs) I was trying to think back, like, who was in the front last year, and all four of those cars had a shot, and none of them won. Um, I think Sam Mayer gets the win. And then for Cup, 
I've picked this dude three years now. And it's going to be Daniel Suarez, Just... who wins the Daytona 500. You're delusional. Monterey, Mexico will be partying hard Monday night. Okay. Um, for Trump, sure. you know, oh, no. I've got a good feeling here. Oh, I've got dear. a good feeling here. Oh, dear. I hate that look. Oh, dear. You know, we've never seen a woman win at Daytona. Right? No. I, I'm gonna give you're you, not you, about to pick. You, you, you are not stop. about to pick Tony Bradinger. Bro's about Listen, to, man. Don't pick Jennifer Joe Cobb, bro. Don't do it. <laughs> no, she racing too. Yeah, that's where I thought you were going. <laughs> oh no, Tony Bradinger's in the field. I'm picking her. Listen, she's really not as she's not as bad. I'm not gonna lie. She looked good when she drove the truck at Kansas, I believe, last year. Is it the? the yeah, I think it was last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think she's really that bad, and. She's by far better than Natalie Decker. So, I mean, like, that's not saying much, though. <clears throat> but, I mean, I, I really think, like, I mean, she's got more brain cells. So, I think if, De- if Decker can finish, like, what, fifth? I- I'm sure, like, you know, Tony has a chance, right? So, I'm going to go with her. Uh, and then Xfinity, I'm going John. I'm going uh, – John Hunter's racing in that race. I'm going him, bro. The next Xfinity? I don't care what no one says, bro. Yeah, he's running the 20 car this weekend, yeah. Oh, okay. So, I'm going with him. He, listen, he – he won the Atlanta race last year. He was this close to winning the Daytona race. I mean, he he can find himself at the front at the right time. And then for a Cup, um, Lord of mercy, who the hell do I think? Uh, you know what, man? I'm gonna pick Zane Smith, bro. I'm gonna pick Zane Smith. I don't know why. I'm just, I, I'm smelling it. I'm, I'm... bro. Trim <laughs> your nose. Yeah, bro. Oh. Got an Opal living in there, brother. <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, Zane Smith. I mean, it's. I mean, I think he'll overperform that car regardless. <laughs> I, re- I, re- I regret doing that. Can we cut that part? No, we're <laughs> leaving it there. Fuck. Did y'all see boogers though? Did y'all, I just need to know. Is there boogers? I don't want to know. I don't know. think so. Okay. 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 So... I mean, uh, I ain't got no I ain't got for him, you know. Nah, I I didn't see nothing up there. Just over. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's what Sal's built like, anyways. Oh yeah. It's no, because nah. he's it's, be, it's because short he's short, hell, dude. Yeah, you're short. <laughs> like, at, least, poopy like that. at least he admits it. You know, yeah, it is the sea. It's the month of love. We we can't be. Nah, I could throw Pookie over my shoulders like a bag of potatoes, and I'd be just fine, bro. Don't. Do That's that. not a better comparison. What do you mean? You're comparing him to a bag of potatoes rather than an oompa loompa. Because he's a cutie patootie. Him... What do you mean? You're calling potatoes cute now. If it was salad, yeah. It's you outside. know what? <laughs> We've got a lot of problems we need to fix. All right. Nevertheless. Um, I feel like this is the first time where I'm not going to go with off the wall picks. So for trucks, I'm going to bet on Corey LaJoy winning. He's driving for Spire in the seven. He's not terrible when it comes to plate racing, but with it being the truck series, I feel like he could pull off the win. You, you want to repeat that? What the hell are they looking at on Stoss's POV? Anyways, the grocery store. Anyways, um, he's probably buying chocolate milk. Um, for the Xfinity series, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's gonna be. Let me look at this again real quick. Hold on, let me let me make sure it's who I want it to be. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say. Jordan Anderson. I feel like that's, that's not fair. a terrible yeah. move. We saw Jeb was aggressive but quick when it came to plate races. He has a win last year at them. Um, Parker Retzlaff, you know, is a sleeper pick, but he's shown that he can be a threat if he wants to be. Jordan Anderson has almost won, what was it, two truck races at Daytona? 
Yeah. And on top of that, he's got Larry McReynolds on the pit box. So it's very hard to bet against that team, um, at least in my opinion. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, in a one off get the win. But at the same time, I feel like he'd push one of his own cars for the win if he had the option. Um, Moving on to Cup, though. I'm going to bet my money on Toyota. Ty already knows who I'm going to say. Breakout season. Deep playoff run incoming. And this is just a way of getting it started. Ty Gibbs is going to win the Daytona 500. Just saying that. Ty is probably planning a murder in his mind. Do you see the flag in my corner? Yeah, I see the flag in your corner. Do you know what that man has done to us? What did you say, Fidel? Do you see the hat on my head, Jacob? I, yeah, I don't I don't listen off. to you anyways. <laughs> I don't listen to you. You at least Ty's more respectable than you. What? Seeing the man who compared himself to Jesus is, is more this... respectable than me. Oh, I didn't compare myself to Jesus. Well no, Not Ty Gibbs. You. Ty oh. Gibbs. I mean, you know, well, Jesus met him at Martinsville and had a word with him. So hold on. Where this is man thoughts? is in a dog store. <laughs> He's at a dog store. This dude is muted too. I thought he was. We're, I thought I we're not going to hear from him. He, we're just getting a sideshow. I thought I knew what grocery store he was at because he and I live close, and I I could have swore he was at Ingles. I don't know. No, he is at he's at a dairy place, so he's at a regular grocery store. He's got he's got to be at Ingles. He. Nah, blood's in English. Is it, is it chocolate milk? He got chocolate milk. I said it. That's what he got. I know Matthew well enough. He grabbed fucking chocolate milk because that's what he always gets. That might not be English. <laughs> I don't know, man. Anyway. Is he whoa, his whoa. Ass? Well, okay. You know what? You need to <laughs> knock that off, buddy. Knock that off, buddy. Anyways, um, I don't know. Do you guys have anything else that needs to get tossed in? Um... Oh, one thought I, I had. Really. You said you weren't doing off-the-wall picks, yet you picked Corey LaJoy in the truck race. Random. Weird. I mean, is that off-the-wall? A little bit. Really? Why is that? I, I genuinely want to hear why. Not a truck regular. A team that hasn't won a truck race yet. Um, they won with we don't know. Larson, didn't they? They won with Byron, too. Okay, so they won with with, with proven with cup, cup guys. guys. Sure. Yeah. Proven cup guys, yeah. Okay. But my reason for it is he's quick at super speedways, which, you know, is shown with his results at super speedways. And Spire's truck program is quite literally KBM. So I'm just kind of going with that. That is fair. I forgot they just purchased everything yeah. off of them, didn't they? Yeah, and Corey's got a lot of sponsorship this year. So he's definitely got a lot of money backing him. And I just feel like with the truck series field being the way it is, it's hard to bet against a guy that's a cup regular in a field that's mostly made up of kids that haven't even run this track more than twice. But I'll tell know. you what, Lawless Allen is going to cause the big one. You know what? I believe it. Double down. Triple that down. Guy, that guy are, we, hey, who, who, are we doing championship picks today or no? No. No. It's February, no, okay, no. my dog. No, we, thought, we did, thought, we we did like championship early... picks on the finale of last season. Well, yeah, I know, but like early, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who we think going to come on top at the end of the year? I don't know. I thought no, we, yeah, no, we did that at the end of last year because it was like before silly season and everything, really. Gotcha. Just kind of get extra shit in. Um, mm. What? Live pit road report. Matthew, are you at Ingles? Sir? Are are you at Ingles or are you at some other gas? Like where are you at? Oh, I'm at a Publix. You're at a Publix. All right. All right. What brand chocolate like... milk did you get? True Moo. Better have been True Moo. The Publix oh, brand, bro. No. What is that? Nah. What bro. is that? That's that's bad. That's bad. That's just bad. And the fact that he only bought one. Now that's the weird part. No, he should have thrown that in the garbage and got True Moo or something that actually exactly. looks like it tastes good. Exactly. That 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 and he turned off his milk. camera. You know, we, milk. we insulted him too much. He he's like a turtle. He hid back in his shell. That is chocolate drink, and you know the difference between chocolate drink and chocolate milk if you like chocolate milk. 
Isn't it no like diff- isn't it like the difference between YooHoo and Nesquik basically? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's gross. Well, uh, live reaction. We're about to see him throw up on the spot. No, no, I ain't gonna drink it. Oh, what a. Mm. All right. Well, with that, Ooh. I don't think there's anything else to add on to, right? Not really. Uh-uh. I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So with that, that's the start for season three. 2024 season is ahead of us, guys. So nevertheless, thank you all for tuning in to the opening episode of this year. Thank you guys for uh, being a part of it, uh, taking time out of your morning at 10 fucking a.m. Um, Truck series race tonight, Xfinity race tomorrow. Hopefully, if weather's good, 500. That's the big what if, because we don't know if we're getting in on Sunday. And we also don't know if we're going to do race reactions to post throughout the week. But nevertheless, enjoy your speed weeks as it wraps up this weekend. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one next week. Goodbye.